Do you want to find out what is the role of silicone in hair care? If you're new to my channel and if you're not, welcome back. I'm Mike. I'm who? I'm a hairdresser, a L'Oreal color specialist, a makeup fan and a skincare lover. In today's film, we're going to be talking about silicone. What is silicone? What it does to your hair? Is silicone bad? And what are the different types of silicones? So if you want to sit with me on this one, then you better keep on watching. What is this story everyone? The topic of today's film is very, very interesting. Silicone is a very bad word when it comes to hair care. It's a very hated word in the world of hairdressing. But what is silicone? Silicone is a mineral found in hair care, mainly made out of rubber and plastic, if we're gonna think about it this way. And let me tell you, 80 to 90% of hair care, whether it's supermarket hair care, or professional hair care products contain silicone. But what silicone does to your hair and what is the purpose of having silicone in shampoos, conditioners and leave-in in treatments? Silicones give slip, shine, smoothness and control to the hair, but it only gives an illusion for the hair to feel really nice and it gives the hair more of a cosmetic feel than it actually works on the actual hair fiber and changes its structure. For those who watch me, you know that I'm not a fan of silicone. And when I say I'm not a fan of silicone, I mean I'm not a fan of cheap silicone or silicone found in supermarket shampoos, but we're gonna get to that because the main difference between professional shampoo and the supermarket shampoo is the amount of silicone found in them products. Supermarket shampoos contain probably more than one silicone in that shampoo and the ingredients of those shampoos are a lot smaller than professional shampoos. Now, have I used professional shampoos with silicone? Yes, I have. And did I notice anything different to with my hair? I probably haven't. But what are the pros and cons of silicones found in shampoos and hair products? Well, the pros are that the reason they put silicone in certain hair care products is to give the hair hold and seal the cuticle. So silicone works on the outer layer of your cortex. So it works on the cuticles, it smooths them, it softens them, it holds them. It can be found in a lot of products for curly hair because it's gonna give curls hold. So it is used in a lot of leave-in and treatments and shampoos and conditioners. Now, when it comes to the cheaper shampoos, they put a lot of silicone, especially to like, let's say, hydrating or frizz controlling shampoos and hair masks to give the hair that feel of smoothness that we actually don't get. This is a very important film because I've had so many questions, people asking me about silicones in Kerastase, in Moroccan oil, and I just wanted to have a sit down which is and explain everything and we're gonna go through different shampoos and we're gonna look at the ingredients and we're gonna break it down and see what's good and what's bad and how that silicone can affect. But going back to silicone. Now, why would silicone be bad for your hair? Well, first of all, if a product contains a lot of silicone, it can build up on your hair. And product buildup is something a lot of people suffer from and they mistake it for greasiness. Now, a product buildup is when a product contains a lot, a lot of silicone and is not washed out correctly, the silicone will actually build up on the hair, it's gonna coat the hair, and that plastic is literally gonna sit on that hair, because like that, certain shampoos and conditions contain more than one silicone in them, so you might find two or three silicones in it, and if you're using certain range that contains two silicones in shampoos, two silicones in conditioners, two silicones in their oil, you're literally building up that product, and if you're not washing your hair correctly, you're literally ending up with product buildup. But what is product buildup? Product buildup is, and I've seen it so many times, you can literally smell it off people's hair. It's very bizarre, like, sometimes when I look over a client and I'm looking to the hair and I'm having consultation and I'm trying to determine their color and their natural base and all that, you nearly can smell the product buildup and the silicone off them. And you can nearly feel it on their hair. Now, if we're looking at my hair, there's no silicone buildup on my hair whatsoever. And I mean, like I said before, I put a lot of stuff to my hair. So whatever I'm doing to my hair and whatever I'm using is safe enough for my hair. So it's not gonna build up over time. Product buildup can be from anything. It can be from using dry shampoo to leave-in conditioners or to using the wrong product for your hair. So if you have really healthy hair and use something really, really hydrating, I mean, it has so much silicone in it like let's say Pantene or like Tresemme, 
that's gonna literally just sit on top of your hair and your hair doesn't need that. Now they put silicone to smooth out your cuticle when your hair is frizzy, but if your hair is smooth, you're literally smoothing out smooth hair. So the product is gonna build up a lot more on that. Now, there's two different types of silicone found in hair care. And I'm gonna list everything somewhere along the screen because I mean guys, trying to pronounce this name is like gibberish to me. First of all, we have water soluble silicone. So those silicones are a lot better for you. They're less harmful for your hair. Now silicone is not harmful for your body. It can just do stuff to your hair. But water soluble silicones are literally silicones that are gonna be broken down by water. So the minute water hits it, boom it's gonna be gone out of it. So when we're looking at the list of ingredients, most silicones finish with con on it. So the most popular water soluble silicone is Dimicone Copalilol, if I pronounce that correctly. And I mean, those words are just mental. Also, if PEG appears in front of any silicones, that means this silicone is water soluble. So it's not gonna build up on your hair as much and the water is just gonna dissolve it. Then we have fat soluble silicones. Those are the devils. So those are basically every other cons that we see in our ingredient list. And dematilicone is actually one of them, but dematilicone with the other word is water soluble. Dematilicone is probably the cheapest silicone and that's why it's used in a lot of hair care. And it is hardest to remove. And also it's very common in leave-in conditioner because as we all know, leave-in conditioner is meant to smooth your hair and condition and make it shiny and all that blah blah blah. But it's very hard to remove. But when it comes to remove silicone in the hair, that's where sulfates come into play. Loads of people are afraid of sulfates, they're like sulfates are bad. I've been using sulfate shampoos all my life and I'm fine. Nothing's wrong with me. But that's me, that's that's my personal opinion. But sulfates are strong enough agents to actually cleanse out the silicone out of your hair, especially the non-water soluble silicone. So that's where sulfates come into play. So you might not actually know that a lot of stuff that you do with your hair may not actually work correctly. One, if you're not shampooing your hair correctly, if you're not rinsing out your conditioner correctly, and that's a very, very important one. If you're not rinsing out your mask or conditioner or shampoo correctly, 100% you're gonna end up with more product buildup and silicone buildup on your hair. Also, if you're using a very gentle cleanser on your hair that doesn't contain sulfate, now I'm not saying that you shouldn't be using sulfate-free shampoo, I'm just saying that sulfates were designed to cleanse out the silicone if that makes sense. So we've gone through how to spot silicone in the ingredient list, but now what I'm actually gonna do is I have few shampoos over here and also I looked up few shampoos online from the supermarket range that we can look at the ingredient list and compare them and really understand are the silicones that bad and what is the difference between professional shampoos and supermarket shampoos. Right you guys, I actually have everything on my laptop in front of me just because it's easier to see the ingredient list instead of trying to look really up close, like imagine me trying to look up. Right, so while we add it, this is the conditioner I'm using at the moment and this is the Siri Expert Enforcer. It is a strengthening conditioner and I love it. Right, so we have the ingredient list. So when we're looking at the ingredient list, if you don't know how to read ingredient list, the first ingredient is the most that the shampoo has, if that makes sense. So we have five ingredients in the shampoo. The number one ingredient is the most amount. So actually the ingredient list doesn't break it down in percentages or mils or anything. So we kind of have to figure it out ourselves. So when I'm looking at the enforcer, the first ingredient is we have water. Then we have cereal alcohol, glycerin, cetral alcohol, etc, etc. There is amodimeticone, which is a silicone. So there's silicone found in that. And when it comes to the ingredient list, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth. It's ninth on the list. And there is no other silicone found in that. So there is silicone in that, but it's ninth on the list. So that tells me that there is a small amount of silicone and there's no dematilicone, which is the cheapest one. So I mean, overall it has silicone because it is for anti-breakage. So it's gonna give the hair a bit of hold and smooth the cuticle. So that's what, the silicone is gonna do in that, but it's present in that shampoo. Now, I would be worried if the silicone was in second or third place, that's where we kind of have to think about why there's a huge amount of silicone in that shampoo. But also, the list of ingredients is quite long when it comes to this conditioner. Let's say we have 10 ingredients and silicone is number three. I mean, 
out of 10 ingredients, silicone is one of the highest ingredients. That's when we would have to worry. Right, moving on, we're gonna dip into my favorite Kerastase, and this is Ban Force Architect. They nearly come in hand in hand, they do similar things. So let me have a look at my resistant range. There we go. Right, so the ingredient list is rather long and I'm gonna put it somewhere along here on the screen. So the first ingredients we have aqua and sodium lauryl sulfates, not a new, that is quite normal. Now, do we have silicones here? Let's read. Now you guys, I've read the list of ingredients about 10 times to make sure I'm not missing anything out and it appears to me that this shampoo doesn't contain any silicone, which is actually hard to believe because I know Kerastase does use silicone in their hair care but this one actually does not contain silicone now I could be wrong but I've literally read the list of ingredients in and out and there's no silicone so I am actually shocked about this one moving on we're gonna actually look at the Ban Ultraviolet from Kerastase which is probably one of my favorite purple shampoos right so the list of ingredients is rather large and like that first ingredient is water and then we have sodium lauryl sulfate so nothing new there do we see silicone in here? Yes, we do, and there's Dimat silicone. So this shampoo actually contains the cheaper version of silicone compared to Siri Expert. So this shampoo does contain silicone, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's seventh on the list, which isn't bad at all. I mean, seven on the list out of all the ingredients. I mean, you have glycodestera before that and everything, so there's a lot more hydrating ingredients than silicone in it. Now, the reason this shampoo probably contains silicone because it is made for blonde hair, and I mean, something does need to help to seal the cuticle. So, I mean, the hyaluronic acid does help with the inside, but I mean, cosmetically, that's gonna help. So, now this shampoo does contain silicone. Another shampoo I'm gonna look at is the one I'm using currently on my hair, and it's Pure Research from Siri Expert. Now, the list of ingredients is a lot shorter because it is oil balancing shampoo, and there's water and there is sodium lauryl sulfate and there is no silicone in that there's actually no silicone in this product and the list of ingredients is very short and that doesn't surprise me that there's no silicone in it so that was three professional four professional hair care products some of them do have silicone some of them don't and most of them have a quite low on their list now we're going to look at supermarket shampoo and the one that i have in my house is actually the batika nourishing shampoo which is the actually lovely in their hair care range. So let's look at the list of ingredients and I'm just gonna read it out of the bottle. So the first ingredient is aqua, which is water. Then we have sodium lauryl sulfates and then we have dimethylicone. Silicone comes up third on the list. So that's quite high up. Comparing to let's say this one when it's seventh on the list, was it seventh or fifth? We have a third. So I mean, the majority of ingredients is water, sodium lauryl sulfate and silicone in this shampoo. So 90% this shampoo, if not rinsed out correctly, it's gonna build up on your hair. Right, I actually don't have any more supermarket shampoos really in my house. Well, I know I have Garnier, but that's silicone free formula. So I actually researched few and I'm just gonna read few that I know. So we have Aussie Miracle Mask. So you guys, when it comes to Aussie three minute miracle treatment, let's look at the ingredients. The first ingredient is aqua, then we have sterile alcohol, and the third ingredient is silicone quantum 26. So we have at least one silicone and it's third on the list comparing to this conditioner, which I think that was fifth, was it? I'm, I'm actually getting lost with all the numbers. Do we see any other silicones here? No, we do not. So it only contains one silicone and it's quite high on the list. Another very popular supermarket brand is Tresemme. So let's look at Tresemme and that's Keratin Smooth Mask from Tresemme. So the first ingredient is Agua, then we have alcohol in it and we have Amodema Tickone. So we have one silicone in there and it's one, two, three, it's fourth on the list. So silicone is fourth on the list. Do we have any other silicones here? Yes, we also have dematilicone. So we have two different silicones in this mask. So like that, you guys, you might think your hair is actually smooth, but they're after putting two silicones in that mask to give you that smooth feel. So that's a lot of silicone in one product. Now, if there was only one silicone, I mean, right, we can... We can just forget about it. But now we actually have two silicones in one product, which to me is a big no, no, no. Right, frizzies, the classic. When it comes to John Frieda, the product we're gonna look at is the deep conditioner, Miraculous Recovery. Right, I've, I, I've never heard of that one. 
Right, so the list of ingredients, obviously we have water and cereal alcohol, which is nothing new. Do we have silicone? I can see dematilicone. So we have one already and it's one, two, three, four, five, sixth on the list. So it's not too bad, it's sixth on the list, so it's quite down on the list. Do we have anything else? Now we have PEG amotilicone. So it's a water soluble silicone and it's actually the first one I came across because most of them that had fat soluble silicones. So we have two silicones, we had fat soluble silicone and water soluble silicone, but like that, there is a lot of silicone in it. Now when you think of it, one product, two silicones. Looking at all of this, what can I tell you about it? How can you stop and prevent from product buildup? Well, first of all, I wouldn't tell you not to use shampoos with silicone. The silicone is actually gonna help the hair withhold and it's gonna tame the hair down. But as we can see from this little experiment research, professional products contain a lot less silicone in them than your supermarket shampoos. So overall, in conclusion, I mean, when we looked at those shampoos, some of them did and some of them didn't have silicone. This conditioner did have silicone, but most of them were quite down on the list. When we looked at the supermarket shampoo, especially the Batika one, I mean, yeah, it was third on the list, which is really, really high. And then when we looked at your frizzies and was it Tresemme, it actually contained two silicones, which is a lot of silicone and that's why it builds up on your hair. That's why your hair gets greasy. You might think your hair is greasy, but it's actually a silicone buildup on your hair. How do you make sure that you don't end up with buildup of silicone on your hair? Make sure you wash your hair correctly. Always double cleanse. I'm gonna link a film how to wash your hair correctly somewhere above here that's gonna give you more of an insight about hair washing and how to wash your hair correctly because 90% of it is that people are not actually rinsing their hair correctly. Like, loads of people think, oh, if I'm gonna leave the conditioner in my hair, it's actually gonna be better. No, if the product stays, rinse really, really well, and leave it in for five minutes, leave it in for five minutes. If you're gonna leave that mask overnight, that silicone is gonna nearly dry into the hair, and all you're doing is just rinsing that with water. And as we spoke, some silicones are not water soluble. So if you're leaving your mask, that contains two silicones in it overnight and then the next morning it's all dried into your hair and you're literally just running water to it water is not going to break that silicone down you're literally causing more buildup so if it says leave it in for five minutes leave it in for five minutes anyways guys thank you for watching today's film i hope you found this film rather interesting helpful and useful please like share comment and subscribe to my channel also check out my other social media and of course you guys please 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 take care Bye.